How to disaster proof your documents. Here is a quick recap on what types of documents you might need in a disaster, where you should store the key papers, and how technology can help make the job easier. Planning for a disaster, flood, tornado, earthquake, fire, hurricane, etc., encompasses disaster proofing your important paperwork. In other words, making sure that after a disaster, you have the information and documentation necessary to speed the recovery process. Preparing in this way also means you can focus on personal safety when it counts and not worry about gathering documents at the last minute. Start planning now so that if disaster strikes, your most valuable paperwork will be safe and accessible. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as ter terrific as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or a vodka. Let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to disaster-proof your documents. Number one, where to keep your important papers. When it comes to disaster-proofing your documents, we don't have no hard and fast rules about what to keep where except regarding one thing, your will. The goal here is to have everything in at least two places in case one is destroyed or inaccessible. So you want to have a primary spot and a backup spot. So where you store each item will depend partially on when you expect to need it and partially on how hard it will be to replace. Let's kind of dig a little deeper here. Generally speaking, you have six places, six places to choose from when deciding where to keep your papers. Number one, your wallet. You are obviously very limited in what you can keep in such a small place. Most important is ID identification. So you have some kind of government issued ID. I'm talking here driver's license, for instance. You can also keep your military ID if you have one, your medical insurance card and physician contact information as well as any important prescription information. Some people choose to carry photos of their family members and pets. So, and this is advised because this can improve your chances of being reunited if you become separated. So wallet is number one. Number two, safe deposit box. You can rent a safe deposit at your bank or credit union for a small annual fee. Fees ranges have ranged from 25 bucks to 250 bucks in the last 10 years, and they can even go higher depending upon the, the size of the box and uh, the, the location. A safe deposit box provides a high level of security. Even if the bank is affected by the same disaster you are, it is likely the vault will remain standing. And having a safe deposit box also gives you what? a safe place to keep non-document valuables such as jewelry. On the other hand though, a safe deposit box can be inconvenient to some people. For example, let's say you want to access its content frequently or at times when the bank is closed because banks are not open 24 seven. And say you want to access your safe deposit box at 11 PM, the bank is closed. It can also be problematic if you keep things in the box that you might need immediately after a disaster because the bank may not be accessible. So when you have to think about when it comes to, to storing your, um, your valuables in a safe deposit box, you want to choose originals of items you are not likely to need immediately and that are difficult or impossible to replace. Let me repeat that. When it comes to deciding whatever to store in your safe deposit box, you want to choose originals of items you are not likely to need immediately and that are difficult or impossible to replace. One thing that you should never store in it, and I emphasize the never here, should never store in a safe deposit box is the original of the original or only copy of your will because the box may be sealed upon your death. So you want to place a copy of your will and any instructions in the box, but not the original. The third place where you want to place your important papers 
is in a home box. So that's the box you keep at home and make sure that this box is uh, light enough for you to carry around. It is lockable. It is fireproof. This is a great place to keep either originals or copies of things you might need immediate access to. It's also a great place for records that must be updated frequently that could be replaced if necessary or that are too bulky to store in a safe deposit box. The, the drawbacks of a home box are that this could be stolen, unfortunately, you know, God forbid, or that it could be inaccessible if your home were destroyed or become or became off limits while you were away. So you want to store all contents of your home box, including a copy of your will, in sealed plastic bags so they cannot be damaged by water. If you have a safe deposit box, keep one of the keys here too. You can also store important papers with your attorney. So if a lawyer, for instance, has drafted legal documentation for you, he or she will typically keep a set of originals. You may also be able to have your attorney keep your funeral or other instructions in your second safe deposit box key if that's what you want. Number five, out of area friend or relative. Remember, I was telling you there are six areas where you can uh, store your documents and increase uh, their um, disaster proofing, if there's such a word, disaster proofing. <laughs> So I've given you four so far and, and number five, it's out of area, friend or relative. It is important that this friend or relative live outside your neighborhood because God forbid there is a fire or there is a hurricane or there is a, a, a weather event. You don't want that friend or relative to be also a, affected. So keeping copies of important papers with a trusted person who does not live close to you is an impeccable way to avoid having all, all of your records affected by a regional disaster. Bear in mind, however, that you will not have immediate access to anything kept here. This may also be a great place to keep your second safe deposit box key, along with the box location and a list of its contents, the names and numbers of your attorney and executor, and any instructions you wish to provide. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. We are still still continuing our conversation around how to disaster-proof your documents. I've given you five places so far where you can document, where you can place your documents. Here is a number six. Now, before I do so, let me quickly give you, let me quickly beg you, <laughs> request that you subscribe to our channel if you love the content so far if you love the clarity and quality of the content please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you know exactly whenever we drop a new show we drop this kind of shows every single day not just about the did plenty but but around a host of other topics number six online or digital storage nowadays with the advent of the cloud the possibilities for online or digital storage have been increased exponentially. Technology provides some excellent tools for safeguarding your important documents. It also makes it easier to access your records when you need to and more convenient to update them. Let me give you a few tech tools you can consider when deciding how to store and access your critical information. You have cell phone or PDA. You can keep your most important phone numbers with you at all times by programming them into your cell phone or personal digital assistant PDA. You can even keep them on a flash drive you keep with you. Online bill pay. So if you receive and pay your bills online, this makes it great not only when it comes to staying current, but you can also have access to the, those bills in the companies on the company's platform. Even if you cannot receive your mail and don't have your checkbook, you can still be current by paying and receiving your bills on, on the internet. All the major banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions offer this service. You can also set up an auto payment arrangement directly with many merchants and service providers and set up direct deposit for your paycheck. 
you also have digital camera and photo website. Now, for insurance purposes, always use the digital camera or camcorder to take photos or videos of your cars, home, furnishing, and valuables. In addition to making any copies you want on CD or DVD or any other storage format, you can also upload your photos or video to one of the many photo storage websites. Online storage is free. It's usually free. I'm not going to name names here because uh, we're not endorsing any particular service, but there are a lot of cloud storage providers out there, starting with uh, Google Drive, for example, which is free. Scanner. So instead of um, making multiple paper copies of each important document, you could convert them and any photos to PDFs. And PDF stands for Portable Document Format. And you can do that using a scanner. And once you do that, you can upload the files so that they are accessible from any computer. You can also burn the files to a CD, DVD and store them or even copy them onto a USB flash drive. Whatever works for you, use that. Whatever options is uh, readily available, just go ahead and uh, have that. Besides cell phone, digital camera, photo website, scanner, PDA, you can also store your important documents on a personal web space. You can have a website or you can have uh, you can also have an email. So some online storage is provided free with many email accounts. So you can use your space to upload PDFs of important documents you scan. You can also pay for a personal web space if you need more. Make sure access requires a password. The last thing you want is for your info to be hacked, for your for people to for your info to be taken to be stolen by cyber thieves. You can also use a USB flash drive. Those are also known as thumb drives for their small size. So these portable hard drives offer a lot of storage space in a look in, in a little package. So you can copy all your important computer files onto the flash drive and you keep it with you. They are very cheap. Flash drives are usually very cheap. So you can buy a second one to keep it in your home's safe deposit box or with a friend or relative. Be sure to get one that allows password protection in case you lose the flash drive. You also have, even though this is going away gradually, but you still have them, they're called online fax services. They usually allow you to fax yourself important records. So the faxes arrive as email attachments that you can burn to disk upload or copy onto a flash drive. This experts have seen this when it comes to wealthy clients who are not necessarily inclined on using quote unquote modern technology. They would rather go with the fax service. So this is pretty great for them. You can also have you can also store your important paperwork in something called or through something called online password manager various websites and software allow you to store your username usernames and passwords all you have to do is remember only one master password to access the list to find such tools just go google do a simple google search for online password management you can even create a master list using a word processing or a spreadsheet programs that allows you to password protect the document. Then store that document on your password protected flash drive. And if you want to, the great thing is you can keep a copy of your list in your safe deposit box, or you can give the list or the password to access it to access it online to a trusted friend or relative. Remember that friend or relative has to live out of area so that it you know god forbid something happens a disaster you have a regional or a neighborhood disaster that friend or relative is not affected i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie Q. we're also having a conversation today about how to disaster prove your documents and I want to talk to you today now about checklist, a checklist of documents to safeguard. We have, I've given you six options 
when it comes to storing and safeguarding your documents. Now let's talk about those documents. What kind of documents you want to safeguard? Here is a general list of the kinds of documents and records you will want to keep safe. Birth certificates, social security cards, passports, citizenship papers, military discharge papers, those are called DD Form 214, Department of Defense Form 214, your personal address book, your pet's recent prescription and vaccination records, a list of usernames and passwords for online accounts, marriage licenses, divorce decrees, child custody papers, adoption papers, insurance policies, proof of ownership for real estate, vehicles and other major purchases, photo or video records of furnishings and other property, appraisal of jewelry, collectibles, antiques, artwork and other valuables, receipts for home improvements. Remember, those are important if you want to reduce your capital gain when you sell the house. What is capital gain? Capital gain is simply the difference between the market value of the house when you sell it and the cost of uh, acquisition. And the cost of acquisition means that you are taking the the price you paid for the house plus any renovation and improvements you have done throughout the life of the house, throughout your life, throughout your residence at the house. So you want to keep those receipts for home improvements with you at all times. There are other documents to safeguard. So you want to safeguard contracts, employment, lease or rental, business and so on, estate planning documents. Here I'm talking about wills, trust, funeral instructions, powers of attorney, employment and government benefit documents, financial records including recent federal and state tax returns, stock and bond certificates, investment records, brokerage and retirement account information, and a list of credit and bank account numbers. Remember folks, a lot of those documents that I'm listing here are already in electronic form, so you don't have to carry them around you. You can you you have access to them on the internet or you can put them on a USB flash drive, as I said earlier. You also want to safeguard business records, including the recent tax and payroll returns and the backup of your accounting software, backups of important computer files, fingerprints and dental records for each member of the household if you have them, photos, letters and other personal papers and anything else you would want to you would want to keep. In other words, anything else you would not want to lose. All right, folks, this was the end of today's conversation. I really appreciate having you around. I just want to quickly give give the recap here. Today I spoke to you about where to keep your important papers and there are six areas. Your wallet, in a safe deposit box, in a home box, at, at an, your attorney's office, out of area, friend or relative, you want to keep the important paperwork with that person or through online or digital storage processes. And I also give you a checklist of documents to safeguard, documents that are critical and that you need to safeguard. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.